Okay, so let's play around with his expression a little bit. And let's, it's a good mental exercise, try to figure out what would we have done if we didn't have this algebraic insight. What would we have done? Because we know algebraic, and remember the derivation of this formula was algebraic, which is the commutative property, the distributive property, and the fact that we can divide by a non-zero. So sometimes forgetting where it came from and just dealing with it algebraically is also very useful. So could we have discovered this formula if we didn't have this geometric insight? The answer is yes, and it's very helpful to see how that would have happened. You could have said, I want my B1. That happens all the time in linear algebra. When you say, to gain some uh, advantage, I will subtract a multiple of one vector from another. Does that sound familiar? What do you think of when you hear subtract a multiple of one from another? <clears throat> Isn't that Gauss elimination? You're subtracting a multiple of one row from another? Yeah, that's a fruitful idea. Let's subtract a multiple, let's modify B. Maybe we'll be able to make it better by subtracting a multiple of A from it. The only question is what multiple? Well, we'll call it alpha. We don't know what multiple. We'll subtract alpha A from it. And what advantage do we want to gain? Well, we want this guy to now be orthogonal to A. That's what we want. That's the advantage we're looking for. So algebraically, what does it mean? Here we rely on the picture. But what does it mean algebraically to be orthogonal to something? Well, it means if you dot them, you'll get zero. And because, well, let's not make it a geometric discussion. Let's make it for any vectors, right? We're now thinking algebraically, so they don't have to be geometric vectors. And it doesn't have to be the dot product, it can be a general inner product. And so with a general inner product, we'll say that our goal is that A dotted with B1, that B1 is such that A dotted with it is zero. Well, let's plug it in. As you know, the inner product is distributive. So, I maybe I should have written zero equals. Okay, we have a dot b, you agree with me? Minus alpha, a dot a, I'm using distributivity twice. One to break up this minus sign, and one to take alpha out. So I will have, and I want, my choice of alpha, right, that's what I'm after, I'm after alpha. And I, so I want my alpha to be such that this equals zero, from over there, equals zero. So can you solve for alpha? Again, super trivial problem, but you can get a little bit lost by this new kind of notation. So don't let it confuse you, remind yourself. I'm looking at a, in a product of two vectors, that's a number. That's all it is. It looks complicated. Paren, letter, comma, letter, paren, but it's just a number. Minus alpha, my unknown number, and then another number. So it's just ax plus b equals zero. I know how to solve this. Alpha equals, there you go. Gave, gave you the exact same formula. So b1 equals b, minus that times A, the exact same formula. So we could have derived it algebraically. You guys are cool with that? Okay, let me belabor this just a little bit more. Partly just to get you used to the notation and to get you used to dabbling in the inner product. How about I just postulate it that B1 equals B minus B dotted with A, divided by A dotted with A, A. If I just postulated that that's what B1 is, and just asked you, confirm that this is, that this is orthogonal to A. Once again, algebraic. How would you do it? Well, you would dot it with A and see what happens. Let's dot it with A. <clears throat> Excuse me. And see what happens. When I dot it with A, I'll 
do it right in place. And if it's messy, it's messy. On the left hand side, we have A dotted with B1. We're wondering what that is. Let's see what happens here. We'll use the distributive law. We're going to do it in our heads. We're not going to write anything down. And we'll have A dot B, right? Minus, remember, this looks messy, but it's just a number. Minus this number times A dot A. Which will, of course, cancel the denominator. And we'll have A dot B minus A dot B. Zero. Confirmed. So you must be very comfortable doing these kinds of calculations. Very basic in linear algebra and inner product. Very basic. So equals zero. And there you go. So that's the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization step.